Jackie took Junior to the pool. Oh, to hell and back. No, that's not true. That's a lie. I'm still here. You've got to help me, Dixie. Dad, what? you out of your misery right now, so help me God, I ought to shut the life out of you with my fair hands. Dad, come on, man, you're gonna kill yourself. Here, before I tear your life and throw it up. Damn it. Gotta hand it to you, Del. You really had me fooled. Halfway believing you deserve the time of day. Had Dixie running all over town telling everybody that you're some type of hero. I never asked I for that. I about you from the very beginning. You are nothing but a lion bloodsucker, just like your father. I've never asked you oh, a Dixie for a damn must thing, be You finally got your hooks in your hooks. What hooks? What an entrance, huh? The cemetery, that was brilliant. You couldn't have picked a better choice. Dumping on your sister when you knew she was at a brother's grave. I'm a when brother's she was most vulnerable. Oh, hell, why not? That is the way parasites operate, isn't it, Dale? By feeding on the weak. No way was that feeding on Dixie. He's got that right, buddy, No way. I'll tell you something. You need a spare organ transplant, you go right back to the cemetery, because I'll be damned if you're going to get it from my wife. So there was no call, no postcard, nothing. I mean, I thought you fell off the face of the earth. I guess I sort of did. Where'd you go? I got on the turnpike and just started driving and ended up at this little motel called the uh, Sunset Motel, somewhere on the outskirts of Baltimore. You were in Baltimore? Why Baltimore? Why not? I've been Raleigh, Durham, Tampa. I didn't know and I really didn't care. I just got very sleepy and, and ran out of gas or something. I don't, I guess I just didn't feel well. Well, you look pale. How do you feel? There was a sign, it's an orange neon sign that said Sunset Motel. Then underneath it, it said Pooh, just P-O-O. -O. The, the L was broken, and it just kind of seemed right for me. So what, you just spent all your time hanging around the Sunset Place? What did you do, sit by the pool? No, I never saw the pool. I just laid on the bed and, and listened to the trucks go by and the, the ding, ding, ding of the gas station next door. You know, you could have come here and stayed with us. No, I wasn't fit for human company. Dixie, I'm in a mess. Gloria, it's not as bad as you think. I know you're freaked out now, and you have every right to be. But you have a little bit of a reprieve here, you know. Adam confessed. They gave him a plea bargain, and he ended up in jail for 30 days. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to testify. You don't have to see him. Nothing. He's not even here. Does it come back for, what, a few weeks? Right, so you have a lot of time now. You can make a decision. My time's running out. Don't rush yourself, all right? That's my absolutely best advice. Give yourself plenty of time to make whatever decision you need to. I have to figure out what to do by the second trimester. What? Yeah. I'm pregnant. Are you sure? I miss my period. My normal diet makes me gag. Cigarette smoke makes me just want to faint, and I can't even seem to keep my eyes open. Well, you've been under a lot of stress lately. The dots turn blue. It's just what I need, huh? Well, what are you gonna do? Congratulations, Gloria. Your life is going straight down the tubes. But hey, misery loves company, so we're definitely sending you some. You don't have to have it. What would you do? You'd 
have it, right? This is your decision, all right? It's nobody's business to tell you what to do with your body, all right? But, um... Women have the right to choose. It's just that nobody said that choosing was easy. This is Adam's baby. I'm scared, Dixie. You've had a child by him. He has a hold on you. He can yank you nine different ways from Sunday. No, he can't. Yes, he can. Well, at least he could until Dad came to down. I know. I was there for the custody fight. And that was totally my own fault. I set myself up by going off the deep end. So who said that I am going to turn into Donna Reed if and when I have this child? One false move and Adam is going to be on my back so fast. Now, that is not true. Now, you can stand up for yourself. You don't have to roll over and play dead for Adam. Adam thinks of his children as personal property. It is not by accident that he has two alcoholic daughters. Junior is a very healthy little boy. And Haley's mother was alcoholic, all right? I think so was Sky. Do you want me to have it? I want you to do what's, what's best for you. What if nothing is? I know this is probably the last thing you're going to want to hear, but, um... I think that maybe Adam might have learned something from all of this. <laughs> how to stage a better kidnapping. No, how to accept blame. He admitted that he was wrong, Gloria. I mean, that's a major step for Adam. He didn't have a choice, did he? Oh, yes, he did. He could have done a whole bunch of things. He could have hired a whole bunch of lawyers and sent them after Brooke or, or Stuart or Charlie. Well, then let's just that. give the man a Nobel Prize. We were madly in love with him once. But don't you think maybe that if you gave him some time, there's a chance, maybe, that you could forgive him? Now you know. Yeah. You came to town on some kind of kidney hunt. I wouldn't put it like that. You didn't put it anyway. I had to go snooping around the billing department. Ted, a lot has changed since I've got to Pine Not Valley. as far as I'm concerned, you're still the scum of the earth. Why? Because I want to keep living? What would you do in my place, Ted? Turn your face to the wall? If they told you you wouldn't get to 30, man, would you give up without a fight? Carving up a woman you barely even know, that's real honorable. You call that a fight? I had a long shot, man, and that was Dixie. So I beat a trail to her door. But that was before I knew how special oh, she was, Barry, man. just shut up! Who the hell do you think you're talking to anyway? She doesn't mean anything to you. She's just a, just a kidney uh, thing, an organ, something you need. Maybe that was true at first, okay? But that was before I knew her, man. Now I know how cherished she Nobody is. Nobody in this town is just going to stand aside and let you have her. Least of all me. Well, I don't guess it's crossed your mind that this is between me and Dixie. There is nothing between you and Dixie except a, a little DNA. You got nothing. You got no history, no relationship. She doesn't even know who you really are. Just because as far she doesn't as I know concerned, the whole story. There's not a damn thing in common between you and Dixie. You might as well be a different species. People around here need Dixie. They depend on her. That's all she's ever done with her, her, her life is take care of the people she loves. What the hell have you ever done for everybody except hand them one lie after another? You don't know the first thing about me. I know you want to gut my wife like some kind of fish. That's all I need to know. Well, if that's all that I'm after, then why did I help save your life, Ted? Oh, I should think that was obvious, so you could suck up to make points, right? No, no, think again. My eyes are getting a transplant. What a shot through the heavens if you had a bit the dust, man. I would be Dixie's sole surviving brother. I would be her rock right now. Well, it's certainly comforting to know that you figured out all the angles. Enough to know that your departure could have helped me. So tell me, man. Tell me. Why did I bust my butt to keep you alive? It must be our warm personal relationship. No! No! It's because you're everything to Dixie. Well, I guess you made a mistake then, my friend. I guess I don't run my life like a strategy game. Well, you better start. Because here's the deal, Gomer, you listen up. You listen up good, because I'm not going to say this twice. I'm prepared to pay for everything, all your medical costs, your dialysis, your transplant, your surgery, your surgeons, the whole works. And you get your 
kidney from another donor. You get your treatment in another town as far away as you can possibly get in another continent. Right now, I'll settle for another coast. But one way or another, I'm going to get you as far away as I humanly can. Pine Valley and my wife. So, that's my offer. You're smart, you'll take it. I don't know if I'm going to have this baby. I have no idea where I'm going to live. I'm not even sure of what date it is, but one thing I do know for sure is I am never going to forgive Adam. Okay, maybe forgive was a little too strong I hear his words. name and I just go cold. The idea of him being in prison does nothing to me. It doesn't make me happy, it doesn't make me sad, it doesn't make me glad. I feel nothing at all. Gloria, you're still angry. No, I'm through. Finished. Can you honestly sit there and tell me that you don't love him anymore? I can honestly say Adam is a disease and I've recovered. Okay, <laughs> well, we certainly know how you feel about Adam. What about the baby? What are your feelings there? If I have this baby, then Adam has a permanent hold on me. I can never get him out of my life. And it will be a tug of war from now until doomsday. And what kind of life is that for a child? Well, sounds like you've made up your mind. There's only one logical answer. If only I was a logical person. What does that mean? Do you want this baby? All I can think about is Junior and his beautiful face and the way he looks up at you and the way that you love him so much. So you want it. I don't want to get rid of this baby just to hurt Adam, but how do I know if that's if that's what I'm doing or not? Or... Why don't you just forget about Adam, okay? You forget about Adam, forget about me, forget about Junior, and think about you. Think about your life. It's your body. Do you want this baby? What do you think you can just wave your friggin' checkbook and decide whether I live or die? Either you want it or you don't. Matter of fact, I made your first installment this afternoon. Yeah, but while you were snooping for info there, Ted, you should have picked up a book on oh, kidneys. Oh, hell, do you want the transplant or don't you? You don't have any idea what I am living with. No. No, I don't. To tell you the truth, I could care less. I'm not about to sympathize with you. I am prepared, however, to make it all better. Yeah? Well, until you can find a way to bribe the good Lord, your money is useless to me. Oh, that's a heck of a statement coming from a man that's got a six-figure tab that stretches all the way from here to San Antonio. Well, bill collectors don't follow you to the morgue, man. And that is where I'm heading, if I don't get lucky. Listen to you. Man, I am offering you complete medical coverage. There's a lot of people around these days that would consider that real lucky. This is not like shopping for mustard or ketchup, Ted. If you fa can't find a donor among your own kin... Oh, forget it. Then you gotta wait for your number to come up on the screen and hope some poor sucker dies. Somebody did yesterday. Some poor guy who was expecting his first kid, man. But that was my shot. Dixie would have never had to deal with it. The most that she would have been needing from me was a prayer. I was this close, Ted this close to getting my life back. And then just like that, I was nowhere. Next time it'll work. Next time you'll be lucky. I don't oh, know it. Next, next time. time, you can't guarantee me another chance. You can't do anything but pay up my debts, Tad. <laughs> and who cares if I die with a good credit rating? So what are you saying? You saying you don't need money, that you don't want it? What I'm saying is that if I have to die, it's gonna be my way. I mean, I mean, a night in Timbuktu with a bunch of strangers. You want mourners at your funeral sobbing their eyes out? I suggest that you go ahead and make a few friends. But one way or another, you do it. Away from Pine Valley, away from Dixie, and away from me. I'm not leaving this world without a struggle, man. No, if you think no you way. Save your life by carving up my life. Jack. 
to me, say something. Ted, come on, come on. What's going on here? What happened? We were, t we were talking and he just passed out. Well, how did his IV become detached? I guess when he hit the floor. Do you know this man? Yeah, he's my brother-in-law. Mr. Martin, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, hey, Take his other arm, will you? Easy, come on, nurse. Easy. There we go. <laughs> Is he really all right, Doc? He's obviously overdone it. What do we have to do to convince you? Activity in small doses only. You've been pushing oh, it much fine, too enough. fast. No this is exactly what she's been warning you against. This Mr. Martin is not the easiest patient I've ever encountered in my career. I'm going back to my room. I advise you just sit here and steady yourself before you go anywhere. You'll keep them company, won't you? I'll watch. You're lucky your brother-in-law was here to help out. The first night that we had stopped using birth control, I had this uh, little image, this little baby in my head. Baby with almond-shaped eyes and, and, and dimples in both of her cheeks. Her cheeks? Anna. Anna Claire. By the second night, I knew her name, so at the end of the week, I already knew that her favorite color was yellow. Sounds stupid, huh? Not to me. I want Anna. And you've got your answer. Well, what about Anna? I don't want him anywhere near my child, and how can, how can I keep him away? Well, I guess, um, you could disappear again. I know I would miss you a whole lot, but if that's what you want, Ted and I will find you someplace where Adam can never find you. You do that for me? You just say the word. <laughs> that's why I couldn't. Because of you. You, Haley, Ruth, everybody here in Pine Valley that I trust. For the first time in my life, I feel like I belong. You do. I'm not going to let Adam take that away from me. I'm not going to let him take this home away from me, and I'm not going to let him take this baby away from me. Good girl. I'm so relieved to hear you say that. I want the baby to have a family, you know, even if it's not about blood. Absolutely. <laughs> you think maybe I could possibly be her aunt? <laughs> <laughs> and her godmother and, and her big sister and her mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm a big sucker for little girls in yellow dresses. <laughs> and I think Junior would make a prime, prime big brother. <laughs> I think I can do this. Without a doubt. Well, it's one thing to talk a good game. It, it, it's another one to play it. No, you can do it. You are absolutely a strong woman. Now, maybe you haven't always been, but you are now, okay? You are. I'm so proud of you. And I want you never, ever to forget that you don't ever Right already, enough. It's on there. Yeah, you're gonna stay in that wheelchair if I have to nail you to For it. the last time, I know I can walk. You cannot. Look, I'll wheel him back to his oh, room. hell, you will. I'll do it myself. We were just talking about overexertion. For God's sake, I'm sitting down. What more do you want? What's going on? 
going on? What happened? Are you all right? Oh, your husband took a little time. Yeah, honey, it was... Yes. No, listen, it was no big deal. Believe me, I'm all right. Just do me a favor. Get me out of here. Take me back to my room. Is that all right with you? <sighs> He's all yours. Will somebody tell me what's going on here? Uh, Ted took on a little too much too soon. Nothing I can't handle. He, uh, almost fell on his face. Honey, I, re I recovered quickly. I'm, I'm okay. Is it my imagination, or are you two mad at each other? No, I'm just not in the greatest of moods right now, that's all. Okay, forget it. Sickness is hard on everyone. Still am. Passing out is not doing well. If Del hadn't been there, I think you oh, might have Del, seriously. Del, Del, Del. Once again, Prince Del rides up on his white charger. Funny how that works out, isn't it? Okay, now I know that there is something wrong. Why don't you just tell me? What does he mean to you? Well, what is that supposed to mean? It means do you really think of him as a brother? How much do you care about him? Does uh, if he would you be devastated if he if he disappeared again? If he if he went away? Is he going away? No, no, I, I didn't say that. Well, I, then why are you acting so weird? I just want to know where you stand with him, that's all. He saved your life. I'm incredibly grateful. Well, aren't you? What did he say to you? Why are you so upset? Uh, Tad, I know that you're not telling me something, all right? Now, just don't do that. Just tell me. 